Uh, hi, everyone, and thanks for staying for this last talk of the day. I'm going to present a work we did recently on video blitz segmentation. Uh, let me start by uh, looking at this video from a Davis data set. Uh, it contains a group of static people in the background and the dancer in the foreground. Uh, the task of video object segmentation is to segment all the moving objects in videos. That is, in this case, segment only the dancer and none of the people in the background. Uh, we can then ask, why is this an interesting problem? When is it useful to extract all the moving objects in videos? There are, in fact, many applications, but the one that motivated us personally is uh, Wittwitz Rice semantic segmentation. Uh, consider this video from the YouTube object data set with uh, moving object segmentation overlaid in green. Now consider we also know the category of the moving object. It's a car in this case. Uh, some methods recently proposed to use uh, such videos to train semantic segmentation models. Uh, to be more precise, uh, normally to train a set of our semantic segmentation model, we need lots of images with pixel accurate semantic annotations. Such annotations are notoriously hard to obtain. Uh, however, having examples like the one above uh, with semantic tags, we can uh, automatically obtain pixel level uh, semantic annotations. Uh, those motion provides us information about object shape for free. Uh, let's now uh, review some of the previous work uh, in this area. Uh, the methods, uh, the classical approaches can be roughly divided on two groups. The first one is uh, based on pixel trajectory class string. That is, they track each pixel individually for multiple frames, and then encode the motion information about the pixel in a compact descriptor. These descriptors are then clustered with some clustering approach uh, to produce a segmentation like the one shown on the right. Uh, the assumption behind these methods is that pixels which move similarly belong together and thus form objects. Uh, the methods in this group show uh, a very good performance in practice, but they quite often are performed by a second group of approaches, the ones based on uh, motion heuristics and appearance. These methods uh, treat each frame fair individually and compute the corresponding optical flow between the pair of frames. Then they define some heuristics to identify independent object motion in the frame. Uh, these estimates are further refined and propagated throughout the video with appearance cues. Our method is similar to the second group of, of approaches in that it also capitalizes on a frame level motion segmentation and heavily relies on appearance to improve the segmentations and propagate them in, in the video. Uh, it is, however, fully learning based and doesn't contain any heuristics which allows us to, us to achieve superior results. Um, to be more precise, our method takes a sequence of frames as input. Then for every pair of frames, it extracts optical flow. This optical flow is passed uh, to a motion network, a model trained to segment independent object motion in the flow field. Uh, these segmentations are, however, quite often inaccurate due to errors in optical flow estimation. Uh, those we uh, augment our model with an appearance stream, which captures semantic information of the frame which can be later used to improve the, uh, the motion segmentation errors. Uh, we concatenate the appearance encoding, shown in green, with the motion segmentation in yellow, and then pass it to our visual memory model, which is realized with the CONF-GRU. Uh, it combines the appearance and motion information and aggregates a special temporary representation of the moving object, which we then use to produce the final segmentation. Let's review each component of our framework in a bit more detail. Uh, our appearance network is the state of the art semantic segmentation model, DeepLab, which is trained on Pascal VOC. We extract the FC6 features of this uh, network as our appearance encoding. Our motion network is a model specifically trained for, to segmenting independent uh, object motion in the optical flow field. It is known on a data set of synthetic videos with available ground truth flow uh, as well as ground truth moving object annotations. Those we can learn it in a fully supervised way. It takes optical flow as input and passes it through to the two branches of the network, then an encoding branch and a decoding branch. This allows it to achieve both uh, a large field of view and a high resolution of the output. It produces a pixel uh, level segmentation of the moving objects. And the assumption behind this model is that uh, independent object motion produces patterns in the flow field, which in the network can learn to capture. Much like semantic segmentation models, learn to capture patterns in RGB images corresponding to semantic categories. The motion segmentation produced by this model is concatenated with the appearance encoding and passed to a visual memory model, which is realized with the Con GRU. Uh, Con GRU is an extension of the GRU, which is a classic uh, state-of-the-art architecture for capturing temporal data. Its uh, key component is a state vector, which is updated in every time step with the current input. And the degree to which it's updated is controlled by the update get Z and reset get R. Those it can learn to adapt its state dynamically to the changing input. Comptier you extend this model by modeling the state as a matrix and all the pressures as convolutions. 
are those that can capture spatial temporal patterns in contrast to the GRU, which lacks a spatial dimension, which is crucial for our task. And to sum up, our model processes a, frame, a video frame by frame. And for each frame, it extracts motion and appearance information, concatenates them, and passes to the core of GRU, uh, which aggregates a spatial temporal representation of the moving object. Consider, however, a video of the cat on the left. The cat is more pathetic in the beginning and only starts to move later in the video. It, so if we want to segment it in every frame, such a purely feed-forward model clearly will fail. Uh, thus, we apply our form of GRU also in the backwards direction, from the last frame to the first one. The representations uh, produced by both uh, form of GRUs are then concatenated to produce segmentation in every frame, which uh, takes the whole video into account. Uh, to train our model, We've fixed the weights of the appearance and motion networks retrained on Pascal VLC and ft 3 respectively due to memory constraints, and only train the visual memory module. Uh, for that, uh, we use the training set of the Davis dataset, which consists of uh, 30 videos with pixel accurate annotations of the moving objects. And those we can also run our model in a fully supervised way. Uh, I present the qualitative results uh, on the validation set of Davis. Uh, the performance of this dataset is measured uh, in terms of IU, which captures the accuracy of the segmentation, and temporal stability, which me measures how stable are the segmentation between consecutive frames. And uh, performance on the second measure, uh, uh, the lower numbers in indicate better results. Uh, we compare uh, to the method of uh, Papa the Glue all, which was the state-of-the-art method on this data set by the time of submission, and to our previous work, which is essentially the motion stream of our network, applied to each frame individually with some simple post-processing steps. Uh, this frame-level model already outperforms the effort of Papa the Glue by more than 14%, showing the benefit of learning-based methods over heuristic-based methods. Our full approach further improves this result by 6% by utilizing appearance information and uh, temporal consistency. On the temporal stability measure, however, the frame-level method uh, predictably fails because it doesn't model the temporal dimension at all. Our full model improves this result by more than 30% by explicitly modeling the temporal dimension of data with the current GRU. Uh, let's now see some uh, image results uh, of our model. Uh, on the left, we show the output of the motion stream, and on the right, the final result of the model. Um, in the first sequence, uh, the motion stream segments the moving water as well as the object, while, whereas our final model is able to focus on the surfer by utilizing the appearance. In the next video, uh, the motion stream produces uh, some mistakes as well uh, due to inaccuracies in the optical flow estimation. Our full model, however, is able to robustly correct these mistakes, and also the predictions are temporarily smooth. The final video demonstrates the effects of bidirectional processing. We are able to segment the cat also in the beginning of the video, before it starts moving, by utilizing information from the future. To sum up, we introduced a learning-based approach for video object segmentation. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, it combines motion and appearance cues, with a visual memory model, which learns to aggregate uh, the object representation. Uh, more results available on the post tomorrow, and the code is available online. Thank you. Questions? Okay, let me start. So the term visual memory is very intriguing, very interesting. Okay. So could you tell intuitively what is memorized in visual memory? Uh, yes, that's actually a very interesting question indeed. And uh, we uh, looked at that a lot. And uh, it seems that it learns some sort of uh, short-term tracking. So it really aggregates uh, uh, what uh, objects uh, are predicted as moving often and learns to smooth this information over time. So yeah, it's a kind of short-term tracking, I think, and motion uh, suppression. Uh, I mean noise suppression, sorry. What is the spatial resolution of visual memory? Can you tell? Uh, it's uh, uh, 32 by 32 pixels. Well, uh, feature pixels, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then let's thank speak again. Thank you.